Dick Hickok and Perry Smith in cold blood. This is a warrant from the Supreme Court of the state of Kansas. When two men break into a home to rob it, but instead end up killing the family of four that resides there, they sealed their fate on the gallows. They never heard me, they just happened to be there. I thought Mr. Clutter was a very nice gentleman. I thought so right up to the time I cut his throat. After being arrested and tried, they end up turning on each other, but neither is able to delay their date with death. And one after the other, they find a noose around their necks. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. He's God in this place too. Shot in stark black and white, In Cold Blood's performance by Robert Blake as a man destined to die and realizing there's nobody he can even apologize to, ensured this film's place in history. I'd like to apologize, but who to? And this scene spot on our list. Number seven, Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Right to assembly. Suspended. Right to habeas corpus. Suspended. When you think of a movie inspired by a Disney theme park ride, you probably wouldn't expect it to begin with a series of executions. By decree, all persons found guilty of piracy, or aiding a person convicted of piracy, or associating with a person convicted of piracy, shall be sentenced to hang by the neck until dead. Nevertheless, the scene was made all the more real when the filmmaker showed us a child having his neck put in a noose and standing on a barrel, and confirmed that At World's End wasn't going to be pulling any punches. They've started to sing, so... Finally. Number six, Corporal Philip Paris, Private Maurice Farol, and Private Pierre Arnault, Paths of Glory. Gentlemen of the court, there are times when I'm ashamed to be a member of the human race, and this is one such occasion. Directed by the master Stanley Kubrick, this film tells the haunting tale of three soldiers who are court-martialed and ultimately sent to their deaths for cowardice. I do not question the will of God, my son. Whether the men are logical or disloyal for refusing to take part in a suicide mission that had already killed many soldiers is left up to the viewer. But there's no denying that the soldier's predicament is something we can sympathize with. Having been found guilty of cowardice in the face of the enemy, are to be executed by rifle fire immediately in accordance with the judgment of the military court martial. And when the time comes for them to face down a firing squad, we're absolutely heartbroken to witness a grown man sobbing about never seeing his loved ones again. <laughs> and it's definitely a moment we won't soon forget. Ready? I'm on good Schindler's List. One of the most powerful aspects of Schindler's List is its depiction of the crimes of the Nazis. When concentration camp commandant Amon Good kills one of the imprisoned people, he does it with a nonchalance that leaves us aghast. It will take more than that. You're right. He's an evil man who sees the men, women, and children under his thumb as nothing more than cattle. When his own death is shown in this epic historical period drama, it mirrors the way he killed. With a noose placed around his neck, Goethe takes a minute to fix his hair before the stool he stands on is kicked out from under him. I have to And he's like be one of the longest execution scenes ever put on film. If 
you consider that the torture, humiliation, and crucifixion that were all a part of it take up nearly the entirety of the epic biblical drama. <laughs> Following the last 12 hours of the life of Jesus Christ, we bear witness to the man absorbing more punishment than anyone should ever have to endure. Live of you, God. Live of you, God. Meanwhile, blood pours out of his wounds in such a grisly manner that viewers are never allowed a moment of respite. When Christ is finally placed on the crucifix and raised into the sky, we're almost relieved for him, despite how terrible a death that is. As his previous suffering really seemed to know no bounds. Number two, John Coffey, The Green Mile. Does it hurt yet? I hope it does. I hope it hurts like hell. Innocent of the crimes that sent him to death row, John Coffey is a gentle giant with a harmless nature and amazing abilities, and a man who touches the souls of those he meets. You can't hurt what's in your heart. What? You saw what? For yourself. Although we feared for Dell, who we had to watch die in agony as his body breaks out in flame during his execution by electric chair, when the time came, Coffey embraced his fate in a way that really stayed with us. Mostly I'm tired of people being ugly to each other. I'm tired of all the pain that we feel in here in the world every day. There's too much of it. It's like pieces of More afraid. Don't put me in the dark. I was afraid of the dark. And before long, his heart beats no more. If your eyes don't well up when he finally leaves this world, we just don't get it. Or you. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. God is restored. Number one, William Wallace, Braveheart. I'm so afraid. A 13th century Scotsman who stood up against the tyranny of English rule over his homeland seems like the perfect story on which to base a movie. I want a home and children and peace. Do you? I do. I've asked God for those things. It's all for nothing if you don't have freedom. Mel Gibson took that very story and made Braveheart, a straight-up fantastic film about rebellion, national pride, and enduring love. Now behold the opal prize of treason! It also features one of the best climaxes in movie history, in which William Wallace is publicly tortured in an effort to make him accept English rule.